Hi guys, welcome back to Ginger Under the Sea for another shark talk. Today we're going to talk about shark evolution. We're going to look at what sharks used to look like 400 million years ago, and then we're going to look at the more modern day shark species, how long some of them have been in our oceans as well, and how they vary from our most modern of modern day sharks. So let's dive straight in. First of all, let's look quickly at what evolution actually is. So some people might say that this is how evolution really happened and well, maybe they're not too far off, but let's look at the official definition. Evolution is a process of gradual change that takes place over many generations, during which species of animals, plants and insects change some of their physical characteristics. So evolution is a very slow process taking millions of years and it comes about through two main factors. Firstly, a genetic mutation. For example, when an animal is born with a genetic mutation that might give them an advantage in their ecosystem, whether it's a predatory advantage or a camouflage advantage, this gives them a higher chance of survival. Therefore, that genetic mutation is more likely to be passed on to the next generation. Now, sharks are much harder to identify in history compared to bony fish due to their cartilage skeleton that does not preserve as well as bony skeletons. Generally, the only evidence of prehistoric sharks that is left is their teeth and occasionally some dermal denticles, unless we're very, very lucky to find a perfectly preserved one, which did happen in the case of our Cladoslashi, which is thought to have looked something like this. Now, this shark, the Cladoslashi, is considered the first shark species, mainly because it has a lot of features that resembles our modern day sharks. There were cartilaginous fish before the Cladoslashi, but it's not usually accepted that they were in the shark group of species due to the fact that they really didn't have any features that were familiar. So let's look at some of the features of the Cladoslashi and see why it is considered the very first of the shark species. First of all, it has rigid pectoral fins and if you watch my shark talk about facts, you will know that a feature of sharks is that they have rigid pectoral fins that they cannot move like bony fish can. Cladus actually also had two dorsal fins. So again, this is a common feature of a lot of our modern day sharks. It had dorsal fin spines, which again is not a common feature for modern day sharks, but there are modern day sharks, the heterodontiforms, which do possess a dorsal fin spine as well. And then finally, it had a crescent shaped tail very familiar to us when we look at our modern day sharks. So this guy was our first ever shark, it existed over 400 million years ago and they seem to have survived till about 330 million years ago. Now in this time period up until about 250 million years ago, chondrichthians, which are cartilaginous fish, so that includes sharks, rays, skates and chimera, which is a group of fish that we're not really going to go into today, but they all have cartilaginous skeletons, they actually took up 60% of the biodiversity of fish. So 60% of all fish species in the ocean were actually chondrichthians or cartilaginous fish. And we're gonna look at that a bit later and see how that compares to the amount of chondrichthians we have in the ocean today. So over the next 200 million years, sharks diversified and then got hit by mass extinctions, such as the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, which happened about 250 million years ago, which I will be going into more detail about in a later talk. After the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, biodiversity was massively down. And this was also the case for chondrichthians, or the sharks and rays and chimeras. It took about 10 million years for the Earth to recover from this mass extinction. And after this, shark populations started to diversify. This is actually when we see the first splitting of rays and sharks as separate species and we can see the arrival of our most ancient of modern day sharks. If we fast forward to around 190 million years ago we see our first modern day shark. So we see our first sharks that are actually in our oceans today and that is the order of sharks called the cow sharks or the hexanchiforms. So these sharks were around 190 million years ago and they are still in our oceans today relatively unchanged. So some of the features of these ancient sharks are that they have six or seven gill slits. So this is quite unique as all other modern day sharks only have five gill slits. So possibly other shark species have evolved to lose their sixth or seventh gill slit. But these guys haven't changed much and have kept those extra gill slits. Next is they only have one dorsal fin. So all other sharks in our oceans today have two dorsal fins. However, the cow shark only has one very posteriorly positioned dorsal fin. It's not known why this is the case, possibly because they are much slower swimming, they don't need that stability that a dorsal fin provides. 
So when we look at these cow sharks, we really are looking at sharks that have been around for 190 million years. They've been around since the start of the era of the dinosaurs, and they have gone pretty much unchanged in this long period of time. Now it's thought that the reason that sharks did survive some of these mass extinctions is due to the fact that a lot of them live in the very deep oceans now. The mass extinctions mostly caused global warming, loss of oxygenation of the oceans, acid rain acidifying the oceans, and so this affected the shallow water species much worse and pretty much wiped out all life in the shallow waters. But luckily, the deep oceans around the world were not so affected due to the fact that they were already low in oxygen, maybe didn't get hit by the acidification of the rain, weren't as affected by the global warming or global cooling, and therefore it allowed certain species of the deep oceans to survive, which then, once the mass extinctions are over, they could diversify and start moving back up into the shallow waters once they were hospitable again. So one shark we just have to talk about when we're looking at evolution of sharks is a lot of people's favorite shark, the Megalodon, Carcoricles Megalodon. So a lot of people have some really interesting questions about the Megalodon, like, did it really exist? Is there a possibility that it still exists today? So I want to talk about this and try and get some facts and get rid of some of the fiction. So the Megalodon definitely did exist. There are plenty of fossil records showing the existence of this very, very large predatory species of shark. However, it is almost certain that it is extinct today. If it was still around in our deep oceans, there would be evidence of it, whether that was newer shark teeth, bodies or bones washing up on beaches, or even specimens being caught in deep sea fishing nets. And also there would be evidence in their prey species. We would be finding whales and dolphins with very, very large bite marks in them, which we're not. So it is certain that the Megalodon is extinct, but it only went extinct about 2.6 million years ago. So it lived from about 30 million years ago to 2.6 million years ago. And this is actually relatively recent if we look at the whole history of the Earth. Scientists predict that this Megalodon grew up to around 18 meters long. This is just a prediction judging by their tooth size, but this means they would have been the largest predatory shark and the largest predatory fish in the oceans. However, not the largest shark to ever have lived, as our modern day whale shark does grow up to possibly 20 meters long. So not quite as large as whale sharks, but obviously a very, very large predatory shark anyway. Now there are plenty of different theories of why the Megalodon went extinct, such as the movement of its food source. However, one of the most interesting theories for me is the fact that it was possible the great white shark actually outcompeted the Megalodon and out survived it. So due to the great white shark being smaller, needing less energy to survive because of its size, it actually was more resilient to these changes, such as the movement of prey species, and also was a bit more agile and possibly more able to actually hunt down and catch the prey species, and therefore actually outcompeted the Megalodon for its food source and therefore allowed the Megalodon to go extinct while the Great White Shark continued to survive and obviously is in our oceans today. Now a really interesting fact after the Megalodon went extinct was actually that baleen whales, which was one of its main food sources, actually increased in average size after its extinction. So this was showing that the whales are actually, now they are not being predated by this large predatory shark, actually were allowed to start to grow larger, which was maybe restricted while the Megalodon was hunting them. And finally, we're gonna look at our most modern of modern day sharks. Now this is the Hammerhead or Svernidae family. These guys have only been in our oceans for around 20 million years. There is currently eight different species of Hammerhead in our oceans and they have all come about in the last 20 million years. The first one being the Winghead. This species has the longest and narrowest cephalofoil or Hammerhead, which is interesting as this mutation must have come in relatively quickly in evolutionary terms, but proved to be such an evolutionary advantage that actually this mutation stuck and then other sharks such as the scalloped hammerhead and the great hammerhead actually evolved from this winghead species around 20 million years ago. So now if we look at the biodiversity of fish and how many of them are chondrichthians, which is our cartilaginous fish, we can see that actually only 3% of the fish species in our oceans today are chondrichthian species compared to the 60% that was in our oceans three to 400 million years ago. So we can see that actually back three to 400 million years ago, chondrichthians were the dominant species and they actually took up the majority of the biodiversity in the oceans. And now they're only 3%. So they're very much a small part of the ecosystem and bony fish are much more dominant and there is much more biodiversity in the bony fish. However, chondrichthians still do play a very important role in the ecosystem being top or meso predators. They still influence 
the health of the ecosystem massively, which is why we need to protect them. As always, guys, I always want my leaving message to be that sharks are in dire need of our protection and we must start protecting them more through learning more about them, supporting shark conservation organizations, and then being aware of our seafood consumption. And really, we need to all start working together to start protecting these sharks. If you want to learn more about the mass extinctions that the sharks survive through, check out my next video, which I'll be posting soon, which is gonna cover in a bit more detail these mass extinctions, how sharks survive through them, and what effect they actually had on the ecosystem. If you enjoyed this talk, then please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up to date with all the most interesting shark facts and learn a lot more about sharks and shark conservation. Thanks for joining guys, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and join me in later talks. Thanks for joining guys. Thank you.